Now the three biggest mistakes in recessed lighting are choosing the wrong fixture, putting it in the wrong spot, and not budgeting properly for it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to pick the right fixture, put it in the right spot, and budget for it properly. First thing is the fixture. And believe it or not, there's more than one kind of can, pot light, recess light, whatever you want to call it, up there in the ceiling. There's lots of different kinds, hundreds. Thousands. A recessed light is composed of the housing, that's the guts that go up inside the wall that we don't see, the trim kit, and the bulb. The first part is the housing, and that's what goes up in the ceiling. You don't see it, and it's the most important part, the most expensive part, usually. I shouldn't say that, because some of those trim kits are really freaking expensive. You can also get incandescent or line voltage versus low voltage where it has its own transformer. Most of you are probably familiar with the can pot light, a recess light, a big Swiss cheese in the ceiling pattern. That's the problem. They're ugly. There's lots of different trim kits out there, so they don't have to look like that. And there's lots of sizes of those trim kits. They can go from two inches all the way up to eight inches. Four, six inches are probably the ones that are more common. They come round, they come square, LED strips. You can get a gimbal, which allows you to direct the bulb light in a certain direction or, or a pinpoint light that allows you to do a 15 degree beam of light on a piece of artwork. If you think about the purpose of the light, what it's going to do for you, then it's going to solve two of the fixture problems. One is the trim kit and the other is the bulb. Bulbs come all different ways. They come incandescent, that's your old fashioned bulb. They come LED. They come with different spreads. So this is where geometry rears its ugly head again. 15 degrees all the way up to 60 degrees. Depending on what you want to do, you're going to choose a different bulb. So for the fixture, three things to consider. The second biggest mistake is laying it out wrong. And I decided to look online to see what kind of information was out there for homeowners on how to lay out recessed lights and i can tell you as a professional designer the information you're getting online is shit 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 do not pay attention to it a nine foot grid throw up nine lights in the middle of your ceiling and you're done that was actual advice on a blog it is a gigantic problem it's crap if you listen to that your house is going to look like shit remember it's your house it's your layout. It's different than every single other house out there. No matter if it's a cookie cutter development, your house is different. Your needs are different. So you're going to lay out your lights that way. You want to think about why you need the light and place them accordingly. If you need help with that, check out my video on how to create your own lighting plan. Mistake number three is the budget. Recessed lights are really expensive. I mean, really, really expensive. Really expensive, really expensive. Did I say that? In new construction, you'll often get a bid and it will have a contractor's allowance for electrical. In generating that bid, they want to get your work. And so they will create an electrical bid that will cover the basics, but it's not going to cover anything special. It's certainly not going to cover a single light fixture, thermostat, switch, or anything else that you would think. What an electrical bid will cover is usually the wires to get to that light. When you get a bid from your contractor, you wanna have a specific number of hi-hats that are gonna be included or recessed cans. What kind of trim kits or what allowance for trim kits are gonna be included? What switches, dimmers, thermostats, all of that good stuff is usually not detailed in there. The more details you can give them about what you want, the more you can get an accurate bid that you can compare to other contractors, the more you can stick to your budget, save money for that vacation you're going to need after you build this house. When you're building a half a million dollar house or you're doing a $250,000 renovation, an extra $350 doesn't sound like much. And my clients sometimes think I'm a lunatic when I start raving about the cost of recessed lights. But that's what they are, $350 a piece. That's for an average incandescent four inch I see housing. Did I forget anything? No, I, that's the quote I just got from an electrician. That's highway robbery. When you multiply that by the average home has about 50 pot lights inside and out, 50 cans, 50 recessed lights. That's a lot of freaking money. That's your whole budget. So you want to be mindful. You want to know exactly how many are in that bid and you want to choose wisely. 
If you need help choosing, subscribe because I got a video coming about all the different trim kits, housings, and all that kind of information that you might need to make a smart decision for your house. When you light your house well, everything else you choose will shine. So do a good job. Thanks for watching.